but I've got more set of zero and I'm currently reading 43 ohms so it's not the best I'm going to have to probably give this a bit of a clean or something so let's just have a look at this and uh, it's jumping around a bit 30 ohms 100k 201k 301k 401k 501k 601k 701k 800 and something jumping around a little bit probably because of the dirt yeah I think this needs a clean 802 902 so I think there's a bit of dirt in here and it's affecting these readings a little bit so it's 10.1 20 exactly 30 exactly 40 exactly well you know these are different digits out the switches feel nice I'm thinking the switches are dirty based on the way it's jumping around a little bit and if I go back to it when it's jumping around it seems okay after that one so all right, so I'll get that clean, but it seems to be working at least, mostly. Let's open it up actually and have a look. So, what's that? Six screws, it looks like. Because I do have a little resistance box already, it's like a little rotary one, which I picked up years ago from. Um, got it from Dick Smith, I think it was. And I also have one which I built, which is supposed to be a precision one. But it's not as precise as I'd like it to be. Using thumbwheel switches. Um, oh, one more. Alright. Let's see what we've got in here. No signs of any burnt ones. That's always a really good thing. Is a 0.5 percent, yeah, 0.5 percent accuracy. Half watt. These ones are marked as half watt at least. Oh, sorry, half percent, one watt. That's what it's marked as half percent. It looks like they're all 0.5 percent accuracy resistors, which is not bad, is it? I can see some grease in there. It's probably a bit dry, so I'll probably just get some uh, a bit of contact cleaner in there. Maybe some um, alcohol. Flush them out a little bit and re lubricate them. It's all nice and tidy. So I'm just glad there's no burnt looking ones because that's always a sign of being abused, but this looks really good. Very good indeed. Okay, so I've given all the switches a bit of a clean up with a combination of uh, Silversol electronic cleaning solvent, right, and then going over it with this one here as well afterwards. Um, and just moving the switches a lot. I would use alcohol as well, but I've got these sitting on my shelf, so. I might as well use them, one's a lubricant so it's good for switches. So now I'm getting less than one ohm. I'm getting very little resistance at all. Um, so I'm just going to see now if that's any better. There's still some error on those ranges there. I'm getting about 1k out on all those. It's about 2k out on that one and that one there. So, so percentage wise it's probably not too bad. Um, let's just start on the one ohm. Yep, that is one ohm. Two, 3.3. I'm getting six there. Give that a bit more of a woggle, wiggle around. It's getting four and a half here, so that one there's still a bit dirty. Might need to do some more cleaning yet. And you get 4.4 there. Five, six, seven, seven, oh, six, 8.1, 9.1. So it's not too bad. Yeah, still a little bit dirt on these switches. I think I might have to use alcohol on these. That one is rock solid. It's 399, it's 499, 599.6, 699.5, 799.6, 0, 903.4. So yeah, I've got to do some more cleaning. These bottom ones here seem to be the dirtiest. Maybe they've been used the most. But um, I tighten these connections here up as well. Just um, There's like a bar on these pins. You just um, get under there and bend them out a little bit. And, they can protrude a bit more. Also gave these terminals here a bit of clean. So that seems to resolve that issue with the um, poor connection just there. That's not really changing much at all now. So yeah, um, I'll do some more cleaning on these ones. But uh, it looks like all the resistors are working okay, which is great. Come back to this, so I've given it all a bit of a clean up. Got the grime off it now and it um, all looks much nicer. Cleaned all the switches up inside and it all reads correctly now and it's not playing up and it's all behaving nicely. This is a really nice condition unit, so uh, I'll just have to put it back together again. And 
I've got myself a nice little piece of uh, test gear here. You know, it's a pretty simple thing. Everyone should have one of these kinds of devices, you know. Everyone needs to have a resistance substitution unit. It's inevitable there's going to be a time where you're going to want one. Um, the only thing you have to be careful of is currents um, and short potential source, short circuits. My little dial one, which I've got here somewhere. Hold on, I'll get it. This little one here, this little cheapy thing. It's only got a quarter watt resistors in it, right? Quarter watt. So they're very easily overloaded. I've had to replace this resistors in here a few times where I've been doing something and I've not been watching this. I've been looking at you know, reading or something like that and I've been spinning this around my finger like this and I've gone, you know, way too low and burnt resistors out. So it's way too easy to do. At least something like this, it's a bit harder because you're only doing one dial at a time. You can actually do it by feel as well. So you know which one you're doing, which is a bit better. So yeah, I've got that one there. Oh, I've got another one which I built, which I'll try, to try and find. I've got one I built, which is like thumb wheel switches. I think I've got to put it in one of my other boxes somewhere. But uh, so anyway, nice piece of gear. Very simple. This looks like it's been looked after quite well. It's in really good condition. So I'm really happy with this purchase. It wasn't that expensive. Well, I suppose for decade resistance boxes, I don't know. But I, don't know, I think I paid about, I think it was about 40 or 50 bucks, including uh, plus shipping. Something like that, I think it was, US. So I think I've paid around $100 in Zoom to get it to me, basically. I think something like that. It's expensive for a bunch of resistors, but it's one of these things, you know, these aren't something which come up very often, especially when in good condition like this one, you know. It's a bit of a gamble, but if the resistors are any good or not. And if they're not, then you just have to replace them, you know, find some nice ones to put in. But these ones seem absolutely fine, so I'm happy with that purchase, so uh, that's great. Oh, yes, that's right, I remember now. I am planning on building a component tester for checking breakdown voltages. I have some theories in my mind about how I can actually do that. The purpose being DC supply, Arduino controlled, which can measure current and voltage. I can go up to voltages of about, I'm thinking 400 volts. That should be adequate. I'm not sure exactly what the top end might be. It might be less than that. Reason being, I want a high voltage so I can do things like test capacitors like this, right? High, high voltage caps. When I, you know, I've got things like this, which I've pulled out. I mean, they test okay on a capacitance tester, but that's not run at high voltage. I mean, this one's only 15 volt, but um, here we go. That's yeah, it's a 300 volt one here, right? So if I want to make sure this capacitor is truly okay, I want to stick that on a breakdown leakage check and um, see if it will do up to 300 volts, or at least to the circuit voltage is exposed to to make sure it's not breaking down under that voltage. A normal tester won't tell you that. It might just say the capacitance is okay, the ESR is okay. Great. But when you stick a high voltage across it, it, it shorts out. You don't want that. So I want to make a tester for that. I've been thinking about it for the last few days and I've got a plan in my head of how I could do it. I was going to use op amps to do some current biasing checks stuff like that, but I'm pretty sure I can do a whole lot with an Arduino. All the actual measurement side of things, like current measurement, voltage measurement. That'll probably be in a later video. Um, I've got a lot on already right now, so that's going to take a little bit of investment and time to design that. It shouldn't be too hard, but I'll need to get the parts together and actually breadboard it up and things like that and do some testing first to be sure I can actually make it work. But that's likely to be something I do a video on later on, so watch out for that in the future. If you're interested in seeing that coming up, then remember to subscribe. And the other thing that could be useful is testing breakdown voltages like transistors and diodes, because what really triggered me on this one is this transistor here which I replaced recently for the Fluke 5200A which I've been repairing for a period of time now. This transistor was breaking down at a high voltage. If I had been able to do a high voltage test on this and I would have seen it breaking down. So it's that kind of thing I want to test with it as well. So obviously I'm using it on capacitors mainly but you should be able to do it in things like this as well. Uh, okay, right, actually waffling on enough. Give it a